guys, this is the beginning of a series of videos which will explain each stage of the design process in a step-by-step -step format, whilst demonstrating how to complete design folio tasks associated with each stage of the design process using examples. The learning intentions for these videos are to develop your understanding of the key stages of the design process and develop your skills in completing aspects of a design folio. And to be successful, you should be able to describe each stage of the design process and demonstrate your knowledge of this by completing different aspects of a design folio. This diagram shows the design process cycle. As you can see, it's in the shape of a circle, and this is to show that the process of designing products is a continuous one, where once complete, you can start the process again. It also allows the designer to go back a step during the design process if needed. So the design process is flexible and not restrictive. The first stage of the design process is identifying a problem. Some design projects focus on improving current products or fixing existing problems. Potential projects can be identified by evaluating an existing product to find areas for improvement. Many new products are simply improved versions of products that we use every day, but are bigger, stronger, last longer, or are easier to use. So when you're given a design brief, it can be seen as a statement of a problem, a statement of an opportunity for design development, or a statement of an issue which can be resolved through redesigning a product. Situation analysis. Sometimes the designer is given extra information along with the design brief. This situational information is given to help the designer see the bigger picture and to give context to the project. This extra information could be a story about the client, details of the other products the client sells, or even information about the location of the use of the product. The designer must read through all of this information and analyse the most important aspects. This helps the designer to understand the market and might spark ideas. The next stage of the design process is the design brief. Whether the job is an improvement to an existing product or a new invention, a designer needs a design brief to find out the details of the project and to identify any restrictions they'll have to consider. The design brief might be short and to the point or it might be long and detailed. Either way, it will state what the product should do or what it should offer. This is an example of a design brief and is the example I'll use in this video to explain the task of analysing a brief. This method of analysing a brief can be used for any design brief you're given in design and manufacture. The problem or situation. A manufacturing and retail business is looking for new designs for their product range. They make and sell simple home products with modern design touches. They're especially keen to extend their range for younger customers and wish to create a product for storing, holding or displaying personal items. You are required to design and manufacture a working prototype of a product which could store, hold or display personal items. Once you've received your brief, it's important to read it a few times. This will help you to take in all of the important information that might be overlooked with just one read. I then recommend highlighting the important information or words on the brief by either colouring, scribbling or sketching on your copy. This will help you to pick out which information can be taken forward for analysis. So read your brief, then read it again, highlight the important words or information and then move forward to brief analysis. I'm now going to demonstrate a method for analysing the design brief using the design factors or issues. You can also analyse a brief using the five W's which are who, what, where, when and why. However, the purposes of this, for the purposes of this design brief, we will use the five design issues. Function, aesthetics, ergonomics, performance and market. The design brief might not provide specific information relating to all five design issues. So it's important that you have a good understanding of each design issue to help you analyse the brief in more depth. You should also make suggestions or note down any ideas you have during design brief analysis that will help you when doing your research, writing a specification and coming up with ideas. I'm going to demonstrate the design brief analysis in the form of a mind map. However, you can complete this in whichever form suits you best. Notes, sketches or bullet points are also good methods, but a mind map will help you to keep your thoughts organised. Starting with function. You should consider the information from the brief which relates to what the product has to do. In this case, store, hold or display are all important words to analyse. In the example, you can see I've made suggestions for each function individually. 
I've also thought about the personal items that should be stored, held or displayed and made suggestions here too. Lastly, for function, I've considered how the product will do this, whether it should be wall mounted or freestanding, as this will affect how the user interacts with the product. The next design issue is aesthetics. We have taken the word modern from the design brief and suggested styles which might reflect this. I've also considered aesthetic aspects such as colour and shape, as these will be important when thinking about a modern design. The brief didn't provide specific detail on specific aesthetic ca characteristics, so this allows the designer some freedom. It's important to think about all of the aspects of aesthetics and what will appeal to the target market, as well as meeting the client's needs. In this case, for a simple product with modern design touches. Next design issue is ergonomics. This will be an important consideration, particularly at higher level, as the products you design will require human interaction. This design brief will allow for some consideration of ergonomics and that the product is aimed at a younger market, potentially children or teenagers, and they'll be likely to be using their hands and fingers to interact with the product. So these sizes are important and should be noted during your brief analysis. To go into more depth, this might also mean you have to consider the weight of the product and the strength needed to move parts, as this will be affected by the age of the target market. It's always important to consider ergonomics for any design brief, as you want the product to be easy and comfortable for the person to use. Performance is the next design issue to analyse. The brief does not provide any specific information on performance aspects, so you will need to make suggestions based on your knowledge for this example. Important aspects of performance that will affect this design are the materials, construction and maintenance. The suggestions you make here will help you to plan your research, so do not overlook this design issue, even if the brief isn't specific. Lastly, you must analyse the brief in relation to market. There are two sides to the market in this example, the client and the target market. Each party requires consideration when designing. Firstly, the client needs the product to fit within their price range, existing product range and brand image. Secondly, the product has to appeal to the target market, so it's important to think about what their needs, wants and life styles are so that you design something that they will want to buy. This brief analysis example is by no means exhaustive and there are lots of other aspects of the design issues and information from the brief to consider, but this demonstration should hopefully give you a clearer understanding of how to conduct and present a brief analysis when completing a design folio. Stay tuned for the next stage of the design process which is research.